Welcome back to Vintage Matchbox Restorations. Up this week, I've got a number 26 uh, Matchbox Series GMC Tipper Truck. Um, so we take a look at this box. Overall, it's in pretty decent shape. Um, it's got a few small issues that we're gonna address today. Uh, one is this little tear here on our end flap. Um, and then we also have a tear over here on the uh, inner mid flaps there. Um, so we're gonna try to fix both of those up today using our paper tape method. Um, so the tools I'm gonna be using, uh, got a basic Scotch-Brite uh, kitchen sponge. Um, these come about that big and I actually cut these. Uh, I can get three of them out of one sponge and I cut these so that they're sized large enough to fit down inside of my boxes. So this is a brand new one. I'm gonna get it soaking in the water. Um, this is my water activated uh, paper tape. Um, I ordered this off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description. So I'm gonna get a little piece, something that we can work with here. I'll start sizing. Um, we've got our box and then I, I use a little pair of tweezers that helps me get into some of those tighter spaces, uh, harder to reach areas. So up first, I think I'm gonna try to do this end flap repair because um, I think that's gonna be pretty basic, pretty simple. So what I'm gonna do is on the outside of the box here, and I'm gonna line up, this is the, the straight, the factory edge of the tape. So I'm gonna line that up I'm just gonna kind of fold it around the box. That gives me some idea of what the width needs to be, um, what's gonna be able to fit down inside of that box. So I'm gonna trim that up, cut it a little bit shorter. So I've got my piece of paper tape cut now. Uh, you see I line it up on the outside. We're pretty, pretty close to what that original box width is. Um, and then I wanna always do a test fit before I get anything wet or anything activated or going, I wanna make sure that that's gonna fit inside good. And this fits in there, no problem. So the next thing I wanna do, um, obviously I don't need to run this all the way into that box. This is a small tear. It's not going all the way across. So I really only need something that's probably just large enough to reinforce that on each side. So I'm gonna trim this up a little bit more just to get to it but smaller piece. So that is about perfect, I think, for that end flap. Now, eventually, I'm going to need to trim up uh, these sides in here, and I wanna leave myself enough uh, that, that that's easy for me to cut off. Um, you know, if I put this really tight, really close, and I'm just trying to sh shave little slivers in there, um, that makes it a lot more difficult to trim up. So. I'm gonna to try to give myself a little bit of room, make that large enough that it's easy to cut off. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is just to moisten this. So I'm gonna take my kitchen sponge, bring out most of the water. You don't want it dead dry, because um, you need enough water on the tape to activate it, but it doesn't really have to be soaking wet either. So get all of our glue activated on our paper tape. And I'm gonna hold that because it does get very sticky when it gets wet. I'm gonna put that into our box. I think right about there. I'm gonna look inside and make sure I've got enough coverage. Press that down, get that to set. And then while we're waiting on that, I'm gonna turn my attention to this other tear over here. Um, and I think that the piece that I had left is probably big enough to do that. As you can see, it's not sized quite the same width. And what I like to try to do or try to avoid is seeing, you know, when you open the box, just a little patch or repair in there. So I try to look for a natural place in the box where I can terminate um, the paper tape repair. So I'm gonna take off another new piece of paper tape here. And we'll start with that. Um, and then I think uh, for 
this end flap, I, I'm probably gonna run this all the way up to where this seam is. Um, and you can see I'm not quite, quite square on the end there. So I'm gonna try to clean this up a little bit, cut it a little bit more to a right angle. And I think that will work. And then I'm gonna follow the same path as before. I'll line that up with the box edge and make a fold so I can see exactly where I need to cut. And I'm gonna come right on the inside edge of that fold. I want it to be just slightly smaller because we are going inside the box. So we'll see how that works. Do my test fit. So as I slide that down on the inside of the box, let's see. So that actually looks like it might work pretty well. Um, if we look at this side of the box, you can see I don't have anything hanging over, nothing to trim up. So, yeah, we, we got lucky on that one. I hit the nail on the head. All right, so the next thing to do uh, is just to trim up how far back it goes in the box. Again, this is not a very large tear, so I don't need to go all the way back in the box. I generally like to pick a point maybe about a half an inch, maybe two centimeters um, inside of the box as a, a decent place to stop my repair. So then take my paper tape. Again, I'm just gonna damp the glued side. You can see it's already stuck to my finger because this is very, very sticky. Where my fingerprint was there. All right. So I'm gonna open up our box. And the most important thing for me at this point is actually to line it up with the inside um, of this edge on the flap. So before I get anything too stuck down, I'm gonna get as close to that point as I can and kind of follow along that edge until I'm happy with it. That looks pretty good. back inside of our box. All right, and then on these larger repairs, I do like to take that same kitchen sponge um, and just kind of run it over the back. One, it makes sure that all of that glue gets activated in the paper tape. Two, if I've got any wrinkles, uh, just putting a little moisture on that tape will actually let me roll some of those wrinkles out of it. So. Our next step um, is to go ahead and press this um, to get it all flat and really set that glue. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll trim up our edges. So in order to press our box, um, don't use anything too exceptionally fancy. Uh, just a regular home clothes iron. Um, I have my setting to just above the dry, not into the steam because I really don't need steam for the box, I just need heat, but I wanna get it as hot as possible uh, before I get into that steam. So this has been plugged in for a while, we're nice and hot. Um, I don't generally use any sort of um, padding or surface on this um, because I want this as flat as possible. And so in, in my experience, just a flat tabletop is really all you need. Um, you do want to keep the iron moving because we don't want to burn anything. We don't want it to sit in one place for too long. So kind of do a quick once over on that side of the box. I want to especially make sure I take time to get down that flap where we've done our paper tape repair. And then once I've done one side, I usually flip it over to the other side and I'll do one more once over on that. Um, so in this case, I wanna make sure that I'm also hitting this repair of our inner flap there as well. There we have it. 
So at this point, all that's left to do in our repair um, is just to trim up where we had a little bit of the excess paper tape on this inner flap. Um, and I usually just do that with a pair of scissors. Um, I want to be very careful and just go right along the edge of the original box. I don't want to cut the original box or damage it in any way. So I just kind of watch on the inside edge of my scissor there and actually run it right up alongside the cardboard. So the cardboard actually presses on the inside blade of my pair of scissors. Um, and then some of these where the, the blades go in the other direction, it's actually quite a bit more difficult to get in there and make sure that I'm really following that edge of the box. very careful with those cuts. Here we go. So now all that's left is to reassemble. I do want to be really careful as you can see um, with our repair of this inner flap it's never been folded. It's, there's not a crease there. Um, so I want to make sure that when I fold that for the first time I'm really following the profile and the line of the original box that when I put that new crease in the repair that it's in the same spot where it should be where it belongs um, and you can see I'm getting a little bit of that box that's actually pulling up on the outside here just the nature of where that tear is um, sometimes in a case like this um, I'll actually do a surface repair on that. So that's what I'm going to walk through um, next. To make the repairs on the surface areas of the box, um, I use a little Elmer's White School Glue. Um, I have found in the past that it comes out of the tip a little bit too fast um, and is far too much for what my usual needs are. So what I like to do is turn my bottle upside down just to get a little bit of glue into the surface or into the, the cap on the end. And then when I unscrew, I've got just that little bit of glue in there. That's all I really need. And then to apply it to the box, I use just a regular wooden toothpick. That does a couple things. One, it seems to hold just about the exact right amount of glue. And two, the point lets me get way down in between a lot of those little flaps. Kind of works itself down into that crevice where I need to get a little better adhesion on this. Um, I can also kind of roll the toothpick in my fingers to either pick up glue or to deposit more. So I can say I put a bunch on there, I come back and I can take it off. So it gives me a lot of control over how much glue I put on and where. Um, and when I'm done and I fold that flat, I can actually come and scrape off all of my excess as well. Um, I like the Elmer's White School Glue for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it's not gonna impact any of the ink or colors on my box. Um, two, it dries clear. Um, and three, it's also water-based. So it's easy to clean up. I get it on my fingers. Um, if I'd ever want to or need to uh, remove it from the box, um, it's as easy as soaking that a little bit and getting it to let loose. So we're gonna come back when that's had a chance to dry a little bit.
Okay, so now that all of our glue joints have had a chance to dry and that glue's had an opportunity to set, um, we have all of our repairs complete on this box. So all that's really left at this point is to fold it back up. So there we go. One complete restoration on a number 26 Matchbox Series Tipper truck, GMC Tipper truck. Um, check back next week when we start our next box restoration.